now as you can see from the last video we've moved on quite a bit um, I have decaled the whole aircraft and we have got the underwing stores all in place undercarriage in place and it's had a I like pin wash just to highlight the panel lines I'm not going for an overly weathered aircraft um, just in service new in service type aircraft look uh, so really the last thing remaining to do with this is to put the exhaust streaking on and maybe a little bit of panel line um, post shading uh, but the main thing is to get the exhaust streaks on because without it it really doesn't look like an operational aircraft bearing in mind these aircraft um, had quite heavily exhaust streaking two sets very prominent and that will just finish it off so to do that we're obviously going to use the 98 so Galerius 98D uh, it's got the 0 0.2 uh, sorry 0 0.38 millimeter needle nozzle set in uh, we will spray it without the crown cap because we want some uh, fine detail I'm going to be using a mix of Tamiya rubber black so that's XF85 very very heavily thinned probably at about 80% thinner to 20% paint and we're also going to disperse that with a little bit of um, leather brown Ravel aqua color um, again this stuff thins really really well with uh, Tamiya X20A and we won't need just too much but we'll need it just for that adding that oily sort of hue to the exhaust staining so give me a moment to load up the airbrush and we will give it a go right so we're loaded up and we're going to go for the brown first um, and then we'll darken it with a black now it's always good to keep uh, a reasonable reference to hand so we've actually got quite a good reference on the box art and that demonstrates just how the exhaust staining goes right down the fuselage now probably not going to put mine on as heavy as this a lot of them do come shorter to around about mid-wing point feathering out over the trailing edge of the wing so keep that image to hand so you've got that visual reference um, which gives you the aid you need to get the correct weathering and get the uh, airbrushes loaded up with spraying just a shade under 20 psi and then get the aircraft orientated so we know we've got to go up and over starting from right here so we're just putting a move there we go and then we're in here you want to keep them separate and feather it out the further it gets away Right in. Right into the where the exhaust ports come out. Being careful not to spray on the uh, engine louvers. A little bobbling action and spray it back. Do not overdo it. You do want this to be translucent. There we go. I think I'm happy with that. Now I need to try and do that on the other side. Don't worry if you don't replicate it exactly the same because no two aircrafts are the same, no two airflows are the same, they'll be similar. So start with the bottom one. And there. And then over the wing. The beauty of using thin, thin paint is there we go. 
builds up nice and slowly. notice I'm just bobbling the airbrush up and down just to uh, get that focus just so you get that slightly randomized paint finish and again checking the other side and when we're happy that's fine now I don't need to get rid of any of this paint you can see in the color cup it's very very thin all we need to do is add a little bit of this rubber black to the existing paint we've got and that's just to give you this more oily residue to it so we're going to darken the color down And it literally is there we go it is just bad in paint with a paintbrush we're not pouring it in we really just want to shift the color very very slowly to avoid going full on black uh, bearing in mind a lot of this exhaust staining will be oil burnt oil burnt in the cylinders and a bit of carbon so spray through the original brown when we're happy, let's go back to the model. So again, starting right at the root. Now you can see this will change the hue very, very quickly, but you don't want to go all the way to the back with the black. You want to keep it in the first two thirds. Once we've achieved that colour shift, just stop. Now, you see there, I've got a little bit of spider in. That's the problems you've got when you use very, very thin paint. So you just want to go in there and just gently touch in the colour. Gently rocking that trigger back to release the paint. There we go. Over to the other side. damage any of the small protrusions so you can see better on this side so again start right at the base of the exhaust stubs and then follow it back Again, if it's starting to overload, just switch the air, dry off, and come back in, add the colour. happy this time we call it quits
pull that quits there. So, I don't know how much of that you saw, we'll see in editing, but there we go, exhaust staining. Now, the beauty of using acrylic matte paints is it dries perfectly matte and you don't need to worry about any other varnishes. And if you are painting it over a finished varnish model, then you'll get that lovely bit of contrast. Um, you can, if you want, add a little bit of oils into that. <coughs> but it's personal choice. Um, but that's how I do exhaust staining. Um, now, if you want to do pan line, what I do is I've got a different model, nearly finished. I'll set that to one side. If you want to do pan line shading, I have got Tamiya's venerable Spitfire here. And what we can do is I've got to do the exhaust staining on this, so I'll do that too. So we see on here, there we go. So same thing, now I tend to blow over the exhaust from the front to the back, and then the Spitfire is drug down, or dragged down by the airflow of the wing. Try the paint now, and that probably finish. And there's another way of doing it. Same on this side. Exhaust staining. Look, even. Happy days. Now, if you want to do post shading on panel lines, what we'll do is we'll just take the crown cap off and we'll actually thin this paint a little bit more. Mix it, we can backflow. So, finger over the end and gently pull back. That will mix it further. So, very, very thin paint now. This is where you've got to be reasonably well skilled in controlling your airbrush so we can pick out. Got the ailer on there. We'll do the gun base. Go the other side. You can start to see the color shift. The rear aileron, um, horizontal. Oh, goodness me. Ailerons, or elevators even. And you 
just putting on a nearest bit of colour to show. A bit of extra shading, just to highlight that contrast. And you can use it to shade channels individually. And also you can use it on the underside we can do a bit of oil streaking and behind the radiators. We can do be very careful, we can do a little bit of streaking at the gun ports. Bear in mind we need to orientate the airbrush with the flow of air. Cordite streaks in there. Uh, we can do some general streaking back from the guns. And then back from these ones. Just remembering to match what you do on the bottom on the top because obviously the <laughs> you can shade just to take colors down. And you can do general streaks. You can also do filters. So you hold the airbrush right back and then a little filter over the wing. Just to blend it. Same on the underside. I like that main spar panel line. There we go. So really doing this, you're just putting in a bit of bit of shading work. color shift grime basically and there we go all that with Galleries 98D A series airbrush so I'll move that one out of the way seems that was just a bit of a test project and we'll look back at our final results here so there we go that is the exhaust staining that we wanted to get and that's quite a reasonable representation same on the other side uh, relatively happy with that really all that's left to do is pop on the propeller and we can call this model finished So, um, I'll get this wrapped up and we'll get back on me for some final thoughts about the new airbrushes received from Galeri. 
So, here we are. And here is our completed uh, Sky Raider. Weathered. Totally airbrushed up. What I'll do is I'll take some photos and I'll put them up at the end of this video. We're not here to look at the model. The model is merely a vehicle for testing and demonstrating these uh, new airbrushes from Galeri. So we've got the GHAD68 trigger and that's a 0.38 or 0.5 airbrush and then we've got the GHAC 98D which again is a 0.38 or 0.5 airbrush depending on which needle nozzle you choose to fit. Both of them double action airbrushes obviously one's a trigger style one's a traditional style. So if we remember back to the first video in this we broke them down we showed how easy they were to break down. Um, they're exceptionally easy to keep clean. Uh, the build quality is very good uh, for the cost. Let's put that into perspective. And their usability is very good. So, initial thoughts. This is the first model I've painted using these airbrushes. And it's been all over block colors. So, other is the pre-shading, it's been quite easy to apply the colors. So using Tamiya's acrylics is what my favorite choice of paint is. Um, roughly 50-50 mix. These airbrushes work perfectly. They're really, really good. Um, they give enough detail uh, and they also put down very smooth paints. I haven't had any tip dry and no clogging issues. So that's all plus points on the airbrushes. Um, they were very easy to clean and when I wanted to change from the larger 0.5 needle nozzle to the more fine 0.38 that was easily done as well. And the price point of these airbrushes depending on when where you get them from when you get them from um, I think Galeri's got on their website got a sale on at the moment but they're retailing significantly cheaper for a similar quality airbrush from another manufacturer so if we look at Harder and Steenbeck if we look at Iwata, um, you've also got Pache, um, to name but a few, who produce high-end, good quality double action airbrushes. Um, these airbrushes will produce similar results, if not the same, but probably for about half the value cost-wise. But that doesn't detract from the value of the airbrushes. They're, they're really, for what you pay for them, they're very, very good quality. So, where next? Well, what we have here is, oh, another Sky Raider from Tamiya that I've built and primed. Primed that just using the trigger airbrush. Beautiful finish. So the next thing to do will be to test how we can get on using these airbrushes for freehand camo painting. And that will really demonstrate to us the controllability and the ease of putting fine line paint down as you do in the camo demarcation, as well as infill and control. And it'll show if we have a lot of overspray problems or atomization problems. So, so that's going to be the next um, on test for these airbrushes to do the fine line um, freehand camo and we'll see how they can perform. So initially I'm very impressed with these airbrushes. Uh, the, the magic question of would I recommend them? Well, I think I actually would wholeheartedly recommend them um, especially if you're on a budget you're going to be able to get excellent results from your airbrush for a lot less as what you pay for a more premium product would you say? That doesn't detract from these. These are a premium product. They're very, very well engineered. They're very well put together. They're exceedingly well packaged. Um, and the support commitment from Galeri, if there is a problem, would appear to be very good. And from what I've read on the internet, there's been very, very good comments made about their um, customer service. Uh, 
So I just need to say thanks for Galeri to for sending out these airbrushes for samples um, for an on test. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, please put them down below. I'll always take time to read and reply, and I'm grateful for anyone who takes time to drop me a line. And until next time, happy modeling, guys. Take care.